Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Facebook Live. And joining us on this Clean Machine Live is a very special episode. I'm honored to have my guest, Bicycle Brendan, who is lodged himself in the Guinness World Book of Records. Uh, before we get started, my name is Jeff Palmer. I'm the CEO and founder of Clean Machine. We're a plant-based fitness nutrition company. Thank you for joining us on Amazon Live, on Facebook Live at Clean Machine Fit, and on YouTube after this podcast has been done on Clean Machine Online at YouTube. Uh, so a disclaimer, the video is not intended, uh, is intended for informational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Although we do try to promote a clean, natural, plant-based, healthy lifestyle so that you can enjoy a healthy, happy, fit life. Welcome, Brendan. So Brendan goes by Bicycle Brendan, and he is a sponsored Team Clean Machine athlete. Uh, Brendan is an endurance athlete. Yes, thank you. <laughs> endurance athlete. He's a distance cyclist, a runner, a philanthropist, working to uh, do give back programs for lots of different uh, uh, different uh, nonprofits. But probably more accurate to what you do is an adventurer. And I hear you talk about creating these adventures. Some of them are crazy. Um, but that's what makes you you, and I think that's what makes you so special, and really why I'm excited to talk to you about that. We all, he also does a lot of um, uh, fundraising for uh, different nonprofits, including NAMI, one that's dear uh, to my own heart, um, struggling with depression early in my life and uh, having a help really overcome that and losing uh, two brothers to mental illness too as well. So near and dear to my heart, thank you for what you're doing and raising both awareness and raising funds. Um, glad to be a part of that and happy for everything you do. Brendan actually bicycled from, which, what was your starting point? For the record, it was from this little tiny town, top of Maine, called okay. Maine. It feels like the end of the earth up there. <laughs> so one of the northernmost ports, parts of the United States, all the way down to the southernmost point of the United States, which is Key West. He did this on a bicycle and he did it in record-breaking time, getting himself in the Guinness World Book of Records. But we're going to talk about a different book today, and that's his book, Documenting the Whole Journey. Now, this book, oddly enough, uh, let's talk about the title there for those who can't. This book was actually written while you were biking. Is that correct? Yeah, it was, well, it was written right when I got back. Okay. With, um, yeah, with uh, some, needless to say, some long-lasting injuries afterwards as well. Mm -hmm. But so you did this actually writing and writing and writing at the same yeah. time, right? With your yeah. thoughts. Yeah, so what I ended up doing was I made a bunch of, of videos that I posted live to keep people, you know, engaged in the journey the whole time because, you know, it wasn't just it wasn't just about the ride and it wasn't just about the record. It was about raising awareness and creating a community about do, doing good for others and also doing good, you know, unto yourselves as well. And, and so the book Explain, talk to the, because uh, some people might not quite understand the title of the book. They're like, okay, an endurance athlete, a world record holder, for those who can't, what does that mean? Yeah, so actually this was all inspired. I have a very similar, you know, story to you, Jeff, as well. You know, um, when I turned 18, I started losing friends to mental illness, you know, suffering from it myself uh, as a, as young as a child, uh, continuing on to an adult head. And this is to honor those, uh, you know, those who can't, um, it's to honor my two friends who I lost to uh, mental illness. Yeah. I, I lost, um, several friends actually, unfortunately to suicide from depression and, and drug abuse, which is why I named my company clean machine. Um, I am all about uh, encouraging people to le live a clean and healthy lifestyle, um, to do it all natural without the use of drugs, and and to use fitness and proper nutrition, especially plant-based nutrition, 
um, to keep yourself positive and happy and healthy. And, you know, when I uh, had my friend uh, help me break free of the depression, that was suicidal depression. I attempted to take my life twice. Unfortunately, I failed. But when I did that, the light bulb just came on. My connection with myself, uh, with my friends, with everyone around me really just blasted wide open. And in that, I got connected to my own body. And I said, okay, this body is a friend that is going to carry me through my whole life. I should treat it like a friend, not sit here and abuse it with horrible nutrition and bad food and drugs and alcohol and cigarettes and everything that everything I was doing to abuse my body, my body was still constantly trying to heal. That's a forgiveness that I wish more people respected about their own bodies. But when I connected to reconnected to that love and reconnected to my own body, I instantly wanted to stop doing things that harmed my body. And that's when I went on a path. But one of the things that really broke me free even further is when I changed to a plant-based diet, my mood and my overall happiness just shot through the roof. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, now I'm getting the mental health and, and nutritional or physical health connection. And wow, what a difference. So I said, all right, how can I pay this forward? How can I give this forward? And that's what led me to eventually creating a brand that tied in exercise and nutrition so that people can really live a more happy and healthy life. And I love that that's what you are doing, tying in NAMI. Talk about NAMI, because what a beautiful organization that is. Yeah, seriously. Um, you know, I contribute a, a lot to them. That was just stumbling upon that was a breakthrough for me. You know, I was super, super dark times. I was really suffering. And it wasn't until I came across this subsidiary of them called Heads Up Guys, which focuses on men's mental health and, um, you know, men suffering with suicidal depression, all that as well, to realize that I'm not actually alone in this world, you know, that it's not just me going through this. There are tons of people out there. And though, you know, I felt alone in a crowded room, you know, if you will. And NAMI has great programs all across the country um, that support folks, you know, from children all the, all, all the way and, until the elderly and everyone in between. They're an excellent organization that has tons of programs that can help folks out there. So they're a support based type group, right, to help bring people together. So you don't feel alone in your challenges, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. What is what does actually NAMI stand for? So NAMI stands for the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Very good. And I love that it's support based because, yeah. you know, I think especially with depression, but with also other mental challenges, we can get ourselves backed into a black hole and it's, it's hard to see the light. Um, but when you get yourself around other people and you see and hear that they're going through similar things, it's like, wait a minute. I'm not alone in this. This is not all by me. I don't have to carry this weight all by myself. And it can really help to encourage other people to share. And it was that sharing process that got me yeah. to my breakthrough. Absolutely. Yeah. I same same here. You know, I started doing talks, talks with Nami, and we interact with groups from high school kids, college kids. We speak at um, different mental health support groups and really just, you know, family nights as well. We have the opportunity for hour, hour and a half to speak to folks that either don't know about the program or they were exactly where I was a few years ago. They, you know, they, they feel lost. They have nowhere to turn to. And then this guy with long hair and a tie dye shirt comes on and he's like, hey, I've been through that exact same thing as you, man. And let me tell you, you can get through it. So let's exercise was, uh, I was a, a swimmer in high school and college, but I kind of dropped out of it once I started going into depression and using drugs and all that kind of thing. So once I broke out of the depression and I wanted to get healthy, I changed my diet right away to a plant-based diet. But 
when I started exercising, it all started coming back, like the blood flow, the clarity of the brain, the oxygen to the brain, the just improvement overall health, my immune system increased, everything improved. And it was that something that you kind of felt um, was one of the uh, impetuses for your endurance uh, style of writing. Oh, yeah, no, my my uh, story, you know, I was I, I was using drugs and alcohol to the extreme until I got into a bad motorcycle accident. It was the first time where I really literally had to step back and kind of like look at everything. And that's when I found my high school mountain bike in my parents' basement. Mm-hmm. And that just turned into like, oh, I'm going to ride to this place to mm-hmm. like, I want to be like to ride a little bit further and a little bit further. And the further I went, the more in touch with, you know, my body and my mind I became. It was like I was, con- it was like I worked my way through the basement of my mind, going through all these tunnels, just wiping the cobwebs away. And, you know, whenever I go for a run, I just feel so much better than I ever did before, you know? It, it really is an active form of meditation. <laughs> Seriously, you know, just just putting the one foot in front of the other is really like a purifying experience for me. Mm-hmm. And and you, we see that in lots of the different disciplines, from yoga to to even sitting meditation uh, or chanting. Chanting is a repetition of a certain thing. There's a repetition to distance running or cycling or or even some types of uh, endurance exercise, other types of endurance exercises like swimming. Yeah. When I got in that pool and I was doing 500 yards, you know, of laps, it was just feeling that pattern, feeling the connection of my mind to my body, getting it to move beyond pain thresholds. And and it was just amazing. It's such an empowering experience if you really tune into it. Absolutely. I love being submerged in water too, man. Like that, I love that experience. Some days I'm just like, I just gotta, I don't have to swim two miles right now. I just need to get my body fully submerged in water and just paddle around a little bit. And it's just, oh man, what? It fills your heart back up every time I do it. Well, one of the things I like, I, I liked uh, getting mid buoyant in water, which yeah. is uh, allowing my oxygen to go out so that I'm mid buoyant, right, in the water, and then just hang there and meditate. I, I can hold my breath for three or four minutes because oh, I learned that from swimming. So I can get a good, solid focus of meditation uh, underwater. But I love in that uh, element of suspension you know, that, that there is this stillness Mm -hmm. that you don't get because we're bombarded television, music, lights, electricity everywhere, social media, internet, driving cars, traffic, everything is busy, 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 catching our attention. We could tune all that out for a moment and just allow the silence. Uh, Somebody posted recently that the word listen and silent both have the exact same letters in them and i and i think that's very interesting because getting into that complete silence when you're neutral in 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 the water which is the closest thing we have to zero gravity on earth um you get that feeling of that silence which allows you to listen deeply Mm. and i think that's where a lot of healing can come from and for me exercise when i get into the gym and i just me and the the you know the exercise the weights and i feel my connection the whole world disappears um it is just a just amazing experience to have that sort of tuness a lot of it people call it runners high or bicyclers in the zone Mm -hmm. talk about that experience and and how you get that especially in endurance oh yeah i mean one of the most memorable moments of like being in the zone was actually on the last day of this ride. You know, I had been, you know, it's, you're playing the long game, man. Like this is a 2,300 mile bike ride when you think about it. Wow. Like, like, you know, broken up into 200 plus mile days over and over. So there I was on the keys and I'm just pushing huge Watts. I am flying. It's like 103 degrees. And I have, I I can like, I can tap into that moment right now. I was so laser focused and it's amazing. Like you're talking about, it's, 
it's not like you have tunnel vision. It's like almost the exact opposite. It's like, you know, something's going to happen before it happens. That car, it, you know, you saw it pass by before it was even behind you. And I mean, you know, down, uh, one of the things I loved about being down there, like, you know, I'm from New England. So we have a lot of squirrels running around, just like lizards darting out in front of you and stuff. You know, it's like, I saw that lizard be born and then cross in front of me. It's, um, it's, it's a very empowering experience because it's almost like a positive feedback loop, you know, where you're getting so excited and you're thriving so much in that moment that it's just coming back to you and back to you and back to you. And you're like, wow, I am hauling right now. <laughs> well, and, and in, in some ways when we can get, allow ourselves to, really let go into the exercise, the whatever it is we're doing, the physical fitness, and we feel that entombment with our body, it elevates our experience. And in a way, it's sort of a, a therapy for us, but it's also a healing for us. So you're, you're hitting, obviously, for especially for those who are doing uh, healthy nutrition, and you're getting the exercise so your body is really in tune and then you're getting this mental emotional high and element where all of these elements are coming together in a harmony and it's just like a a vibratory experience that is that is hard to to explain to people who haven't experienced it so far oh seriously when when body spirit and mind are aligned like you are absolutely the most successful version of yourself and mm -hmm. You know, you got to work on them in different parts sometimes so that they can all connect and align in that perfect moment right there. You know, I, I've heard a great analogy talking about like a, the three legged stool. And I like I like to use that for this is, you know, when you have all three that are balanced, you know, you have a rock solid seat and a rock solid foundation. And when you have a solid foundation, you can push off hard. So uh, this was a long journey. How many days did it actually take you in biking? So it took 11 days and a nine and a half hours. Wow. Yeah. So 11 days and you're biking close to around 200 miles a day for 11 days straight. Now, you you obviously had to stop to sleep at, at times and you probably ran into some people who were curious about what you were doing. Did you have some cool experiences and you want to talk about those of some of the people you met along the way? Oh man, that's like literally my favorite part about this is, you know, just being off in, you know, a place I've never been before and meeting all these people. And the great thing is that you realize that there are really good people and most people are really good everywhere you go. You know, we hear about folks on the other side of the world, on the other side of the country, and they're so different and blah, blah, blah. But the more that you talk to people, the more that you realize we're all the same and we're really all working towards the same thing. Um, I'll, I'll never forget. I saw like no one the entire time cycling wise until I got down into Florida. I saw one guy, uh, a gentleman named Oscar, and we rode together for like several miles. And it was just so great to just meet someone else who had just a passion mm -hmm. for the outdoors trying to do something good with themselves and just to connect with a complete stranger on their own different path. It, it was a really beautiful thing. And I'm super thankful for all the, all the great people that I get to meet totally unexpectedly from gas stations to, I mean, re really um, just someone waving to you on the corner that you smile at. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful experience to share with people. Plus, you got some pretty uh, amazing nature scenes and, and animals and birds and everything else that is around you in, in certain places, especially in between the cities and towns, right? Because I've known I've done um, journeys where I've walked, you know, hundreds of miles uh, in raising awareness and, and, and money for different things. And when we hit through like mountain areas, we're just with nothing but trees and denses of birds is like, oh, wow, this is awesome. I know it, you know, it's really cool, uh, that, that part too, because, you know, moving 200 miles a day, 200 plus miles a day, you cover a lot of ground, you know? So coming from like deep, thick pine trees of Maine and then moving through the South and just like watching the landscape change, 
is so beautiful. And when you spend that much time outside, you know, like I know when it's going to rain, you know, you can tell when it's going to rain and it's really, you know, I'll never forget seeing like a flying squirrel dart down in like North Carolina at like the crack of dawn and just, you know, like I was talking about lizards down in Florida. You know, what an what an amazing experience! I saw like I almost ran over a coconut one day. You know? Like I ne I'd never seen that up until that point, and it just you know that enriched my life resume more than I ever really could have imagined it doing. So you know, it's obviously not all rainbows. You hit some bad weather. You had uh, suffered with saddle soreness. Uh, mm -hmm um aches and the general aches and pains of just being on a bicycle for that many hours a day were there times where you said i'm not going to do this like i'm quitting no, you know there really wasn't a time there was a i remember the point where it was the hardest that was but really that was every single day you know because <laughs> everything brought on a new set of challenges like mm -hmm. you think you have it figured out it's just like life right jeff you know you think you have everything figured out and then boom the most unexpected thing that could happen comes and it smacks you right in the face and i was doing this to raise awareness and to honor my friends and for me to personally work through those things you know mm -hmm. and man let me tell you, it was the, I had a couple rules of uh, the 10 K. It was that uh, every day ends at at least midnight because I would be cranking. I'm making great time. And then boom, unexpected ob obstacle pops up. And it was like, well, this is going to add on three hours to my day, you know, and I'm going to be finishing after midnight today, just like I did, you know, all the time. Man, when I started to Jeff, you know, I'm talking about 103 degree weather down in the Keys. It was below freezing. When I when I started in Madawaska, it was like 30 <laughs> degrees, dude. I had to pop into a general store, mind you, the only general store, and buy a pair of gardening gloves. I was wearing three pairs of gloves that day. Wow. I ended up letting down my hair to keep my ears warm. And man, do I wish I brought a hairbrush because I had a softball size. <laughs> not in my hair that just increased along the way you know <clears throat> and like you know the saddle sores too like what it ended up doing was i subconsciously to reduce pain so i could push more miles every day i subconsciously rotated my pelvis which affects your entire interaction with the bike so i ended up putting more pressure on my hands and then what that ended up doing was giving me this thing that happens to a lot of ultra endurance cyclists called cyclist palsy, essentially crushing the ulnar nerve in your hand. So I had, I had what's called crab, I was calling crab claws. My hands were like stuck in the hoods. I had mm -hmm. no use over, you know, the outside parts of my hands. It was just to the point of if I was going to shift gears, whether it was in front or in the back, me, I couldn't do it with these hands. I had to reach across to the other side to shift. So I'm going up a hill or I'm just like stuck in traffic in some giant city I'm trying to navigate through. And I'm like shifting with opposite hands, like hands too weak to grab the brakes. And then that was an injury that lasted for months afterwards. And that's actually, um, I think what you were alluding to before was I wrote this entire book on my iPhone with my thumbs afterwards because I couldn't type. Mm -hmm. I literally wrote a 200 page book on an iPhone note with my thumbs afterwards. Wow. <laughs> now, I, I, you know, when I work out and some, some days are, you just don't feel like doing, <laughs> doing it. And, um, but I get in there and I push myself anyway. And sometimes I'm really pushing through some struggling parts where I'm low energy or, uh, you know, I'm just feeling soreness and I'm just pushing through some soreness, not meaning to overtrain. And I don't want to encourage anybody to overtrain. But, you know, that's when I call on why I do this. You know, I want to represent, I want to show people that you can successfully build muscle, be healthy, be fit at my age of 58 years of age and, and still do it. So when you have a higher cause, the body tends to 
behave differently, doesn't it? I mean, your mind can override these things. It's, and that's what I love about uh, being plant-based, being vegan, and and trying to really encourage people to live a natural and healthy lifestyle through fitness, exercise, and nutrition, is that I am I am doing this for a bigger cause than myself. If I were just in the gym to look good, you know, just to impress somebody, I don't need to impress anymore. Thank God, I'm very happily married, <laughs> and will be for the rest of my life. She's the most awesome partner I could imagine, but. You know, I don't, I'm not, it's not about me. For me, that exercise is to represent something that is much more important than me, a movement that is much more important to me with trillions of animals suffering and dying right now. Mm -hmm. And with even, you know, hundreds of millions of Americans and people around the globe suffering from their own inactivity, poor nutrition and, and con consumption of animal products. And I truly believe that the science is just overwhelming there. So I am doing this to help support human animals, animals, the environment, and while getting in touch with my own self, helping my own personal healing emotionally, mentally, and physically, and, and try to push that forward and, and, and represent that to the best of my ability. So that's, you know, when you have a cause like NAMI that you're writing for, when it's tied to a deep-seated emotion of two friends that you lost due to this, that bigger cause can really get us in touch with breakthrough activity, with, mm -hmm. with experiences and with actions that take us beyond what our mind would say, no, don't go there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, all right, this book, this book goes into some, you know, it's, it's funny in reading the, your book, at times I'm cringing because of what you're going through. At other times I'm laughing because of what you're going through. And then other times I'm just, wow, just trying to picture myself in that scenario. Some of these scenarios are just scenarios normal people won't, may never be experiencing in. But we all have challenges in our lives, whether it's through physical or mental or emotional challenges, uh, family challenges, people who are we're close to that pass in our lives, lots of those things. These are all challenges that we need to learn to cope with. And I think what you're talking about in this book so eloquently and so from the heart, so transparent, you did, I can tell you wrote this book from your experience, mm -hmm. not trying to, create a book and impress anybody but the just the raw here i am this is what i'm doing this is what i'm going through right. nothing polished you know i see the reality shows on tv yeah. and they're so rehearsed and so polished and oh god nobody really does that or says that <laughs> and then i read your book it's so refreshing to just get true raw this is me good bad ugly mm -hmm. <laughs> this, this stuff happened and here it is. I hope you learn from it. I hope you gain something from it. I'm sharing from the heart. I love that about your writing style. Thank you, man. Thank you. You know, I really try. That was, I really appreciate all that because that, that was the true intention. You know, it was, you know, it was a kind of like a cathartic experience for me to, you know, write this and then not just like relive all these amazing experiences that I learned so much from and I use literally in my everyday life but to just like share those with folks and just know that like, I mean, nothing is going to be perfect. You know, like if I could, I would have set the, uh, I would have set the temperature at like 70 for this whole thing. And I got a mixed bag of crazy the entire time, whether that was weather drivers and like literally everything in between, you know, the journey, you know, the more I do this stuff, the more I realize like, I'm searching for a journey. You know what I mean? Like I'm looking for a quest for this, you know, and you're, you're talking about, you know, having a why, like if my why was to like have an accomplishment, you know, they say we all die poor and like, we all kind of die with no accomplishments when you think about it, because we take nothing with us. And this is just like something I hope that I can give to folks that, you know, really need something that they can hang their hat on and be like, it's, 
going to be kind of dirty and it's not going to be very pretty most of the time, but I'm going to count the side a much better person I was than when I started. That's so awesome. Now, when, when I traveled all through Europe, I, I traveled all over the world, 48 different countries. And uh, I did this when I was uh, newly vegan back in the late eighties. So there wasn't a, a lot of uh, the vegan comfort foods that you see around and it wasn't really uh, available. So I really had to go to produce stands and stuff like that to try to get my food, which was great because I was eating pretty healthy, but yeah. you know, it can be challenging even to find some just basic fundamental foods enough to fill you up and, and keep you from being hungry. Did you run into that, especially traveling through some of the smaller towns that you went through? How did you, being plant-based, being a vegan, um, how did you get yourself fed in a way that worked? <laughs> yeah, yeah, seriously. I, um, I pretty much ate like several Subway veggie sandwiches a day. Like that, <laughs> that was the bulk of it. I would run into a Subway. So like I kind of broke it down into like, ride 60 miles, get some food, ride 60 miles, get some food, you know, kind of like repeating that process. And what I would do is was like, I would get like a foot long, I would grab a half, I would eat it while I was riding. And I would put the other half in a plastic bag and dangle it off my handlebars. So I could just like keep that process going. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it, it's tough when you get into these spots where it's like, there's like one store in the in entire town. Like I didn't realize this, you know, being a kid who grew up in Massachusetts, like when I rode my bike across the country for St. Jude's back in 2017, I went through towns that was like 600 people there, man, you know, <laughs> and, and like everybody's a farmer. So it's like, it's not like they're like going to go get, you know, like you're talking about vegan comfort food, like that doesn't like exist everywhere. So it was a struggle to just get calories at times. But, you know, once I started getting into, uh, like Florida, for example, it was, it started to get a lot easier to get like actual nutrition. And it was wild, Jeff, because, you know, I eat pretty clean through all my training and everything. Cause it just, you know, it fuels you to be able to push harder, you know, and feel better every single day. And oh my goodness. Uh, thank God for like smoothie bowls, you know, cause once, <laughs> once I got into Florida, it was so great to like, you know, grab a smoothie and like an avocado sandwich, like real fruits and vegetables and like be able to eat that on the bike instead of, you know, a Subway sandwich. Mm. <laughs> Did you do bars? I mean, like cliff bars and things like this to sustain you through um, at all through the book, through the trek? I did. Um, it was, uh, you know, your tongue gets really messed up because you're like constantly eating, you know, it's a cycling challenge, but it's also like an eating challenge you know, cause you're burning thousands and thousands of calories. I'm running my bike for like 17, 18 plus hours a day. You know, wow. that's a lot of calories. Like when I train normally, I try to get like 300 an hour. And like, that's kind of tough when your tongue is just raw and you're just like tired in general, like eating is a struggle. So I, I had, uh, <laughs> you know, a lot of inside jokes with myself during this. I had an water <laughs> bottle um, that I literally just called it chocolate water, but it was just water to wash down food I was eating. So like cliff bars, uh, I mean like little biscuits, like really like any gas station vegan food I could get. I was hardly chewing at the end. Like it was more like saturated with water. It was pretty brutal towards the end. <laughs> so this this book that you've got, I love it. Uh, it's it's awesome. Let people know where they can get a copy of the book. Um, I encourage you to read it, especially if you're an endurance athlete. I'm sure you can relate to some of these stories in here. Uh, it's pretty amazing. Um, so how can they? Uh, how can people follow you, and how can they get a copy of the book? Yeah, so I'm at Bicycle Brendan on Instagram, on Facebook. My website is bicyclebrendan.com. And that's actually where you can grab a copy of my book. And they awesome. all seem signed and uh, they will be uh, packaged by myself. So you got it straight from the source. <laughs> nice. nice. Um, so uh, next month we're, we're gonna have a promotion and uh, we're uh, supporting all of our athletes, our team Clean Machine Athletes. And Brendan is Bicycle Brendan is one of those um, sponsored athletes. So for all next month, 
we are um, offering 25% off all of our products, excluding uh, apparel and merchandise, but all of the products, 25% off for the whole month when you use Brendan's code, which is... BWTCM. So that's BW for Brendan Walsh and TCM for Team Clean Machine. So just type in those five letters, BWTCM. You'll get 25% off your entire order all month next month for the month of September. Any of you who are watching this video in the future, this is uh, uh, September 2021. Uh, so if you're watching it at that period of time, use the code. You can join in there. So some parting notes what was what was one of the biggest takeaways of your recent uh, some of your recent adventures i think it's you know we we set limits on ourselves every single day you know um with my last adventure i called it the ne6 where i ran the highest mountain in each state of new england and instead of using a car to get in between them, I cycled in between them. So I ran up Katahdin, cycled to Washington, ran up and down Washington, did Mansfield and Vermont. And, you know, I pushed myself way harder than I ever have before. You know, like e even on the 10K, you know, that was that was just a point of growth for me. And, you know, that's what we don't realize is that every time we overcome something, it's kind of like we're leveling up, you know. And so many times I realized in that I was like, oh. I don't know how much more I got. Like my knees are killing me. Like my, I, lo I lost feeling in some of my toes, you know? And then all of a sudden you just have this untapped reserve and you can just push further than you ever thought you did before. And that's the thing is, you know, I really don't like to set any expectations for myself anymore. And that doesn't mean I'm not working as hard as I can. That in directly implies work as hard as you can because you may be cutting yourself short and you don't even realize it. That is, that is great advice. And advice you can apply to anybody's life really yeah. um, is we uh, create boundaries in our mind that keep us from moving forward, keep us from doing that. And some of those come from old wounds, you know, um, uh, emotional scars that we have that we create boundaries. And we're not going to go there because, you know, in in my past, those those brought me pain. And to reopen those doors and re-examine them with care, with support. And that's why I love, you know, that you work with groups like NAMI. Um, find that support, find it in a partner. Like I'm fortunate to have an amazing partner and I know you do too as well. Absolutely. Yeah, um, but, or friends or a support group or find that to help you break through of some of those things that are holding you back from being the best, from having the best life that you can. And that's all up to you. I'm not going to tell you what the best life is for you. That's for you to determine. It's for each individual to find out for themselves. But nutrition, exercise, and pushing those boundaries can all help you explore, open up, and, and really enjoy life to its fullest. And, and that's what I want for, for everyone. I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast with us. Thank you, Brendan, for not only coming on and talking about your journey, your new book, but also sharing from your heart about some of the experiences that really changed you and for all the work that you do for nonprofit groups. Love what you're doing. Thank you, brother. Thank you, man. You know, I, I appreciate you and everything you do, not just, you know, for Bicycle Brendan and me helping folks, but, you know, you really spread the good word and it is so from your heart. And every time you speak about it, like I just see your eyes light up and it, it inspires me back, man. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us. And remember, you can use uh, Brendan's code all in the month of September 2021, get 25% off, including Intense, which oh. is a great new product. And for, you know, a lot of people think, oh, your sports nutrition is for people who are working out the, and not for endurance athletes. Oh, no. I developed this product almost really specifically for endurance athletes, but people can use it for a pre-workout, whether you're going to the gym or, you know, whatever, because this new mango leaf extract really helps you get your mind focused. And 
boy, that's the endurance <laughs> experience altogether, is that mental focus without too much of the caffeine that would get you nervous and make you make bad decisions on the bike or swimming or, or running or whatever. Don't want to do that. Um, and this has uh, got uh, an amazing uh, group of ingredients called Rip Factor in it, which is clinically proven in humans to increase endurance up to 35%. And if you're an endurance athlete, check it out. It might be right for you. Uh, I, I I know Brendan has given it a try. Your thoughts? I love that stuff, man. Like, I <laughs> love it. Like, I'll take it before the gym. I'll take it before a track workout. Like, sometimes you, you're talking about pushing when you don't want to. Oh, man, the N10s, like, whew, I love that stuff. Awesome. Awesome. 25% off if you want to give it a try. And we have a 60-day money back guarantee. So no harm in trying at any time. Thank you, Brendan. Thank Love you. your work. Love you, brother. Love you too, buddy. Bye. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back next week.